Hey there, Sharon Elstrom here, but you can call me Pajama Grandma. In case we haven't met yet, go and put hashtag pajama in the comments below so I know it's the first time you're being exposed to the Pajama Grandma. I'm going to do something a little different on this episode. I'm going to talk about why Pajama Grandma. And I'm going to follow a script called the Epiphany Bridge script. And I'm going to do it for practice because that is an assignment for a challenge that I'm doing today. And I want to actually practice it on something other than what I'm really doing for the challenge. So I thought, well, why not share this using this script why I do the pajama grandma question every morning? Why do I do this segment? What the heck does it mean? What's it for? And why do I or anybody else care about it? I'm going to use this script again called the Epiphany Bridge script. So the first thing that we do in sharing our Epiphany Bridge or our origin story is we talk about our backstory. What is it in my backstory that would give you a vested interest in? Why would you care about listening to the Pajama Grandma question every day? Well, a few years ago, I found myself a 50-something, um, middle-aged, I guess, but 50 somethings probably more than middle-aged, but an older woman in the position where I was going to be divorced. Now, I'm one of those people that grew up with parents and grandparents that had a model marriage, and I always believed that I would get married once and for the rest of my life, I would be married to this person. And that isn't how it always works out. And for me, that's not how it worked out. So finding myself divorced and having to separate all of our businesses and all of our assets put me in a very different financial position than I'd ever been in in my life. I'd been used to running traditional brick and mortar businesses and you know, working in corporate America, I had a really traditional college upbringing and career and worked, you know, pretty hard my whole life and found myself in a position where I didn't really know what I was going to do and how I was going to cre recreate the life that I wanted. Um, it was reimagining my entire future versus what I had envisioned my future to be in the first place. So, you know, what were my external desires? That's the next question. I wanted to find a way to provide for myself and my family that felt good to me and positive. I wanted to, to make money and make a living and to be able to have the resources to live the lifestyle that, you know, I think I deserve to be living and my kids deserve to be living as well. My internal desire was to just feel like I wasn't a failure because my marriage wasn't a success or I didn't have that lifelong dream marriage that I thought I would have. Um, and I wanted to to make sure that I overcame my fears and my insecurities and my doubts about myself as a human being because of that one failed experience in my life. So as I'm transitioning from my offline brick and mortar businesses, I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Because I had to sell my business as part of the divorce and most of my other assets. But I was kind of left in this void of what do I do now? I Do I really want to go back and get a job? Do I want to go back and start another business? Or do I want to start another physical brick and mortar business? Or do I want to look for something else? So I went on a bit of a journey online, which was what led me to what I'm doing now, online looking for what else was possible. What else could I possibly do at my age with my skill set that would make me feel good about myself and feel like I'm making a contribution to the world and that I can help other people and make the world a better place. So my plan was to learn as much as I could and figure out, well, how can I transition in this transitional period of everything in my life from the traditional business world of corporate America and brick and mortar to an online presence where I would be more comfortable, able to reach more people that I could help and make a real difference. So my plan was to learn a software program called ClickFunnels which I did, I became a certified partner for them, and then to start to apply the things that I learned to create my own online presence and my own online business. The problem was, I didn't know how to do anything online. I had to learn everything from scratch, which was part of why I was attracted to the ClickFunnels organization, because it's a great community, and they allow, and they have tons of training and, and events and things, and a great community of people that became a resource for me and helped me to learn everything that I need to do online, things like this Epiphany Bridge script, to help me share my story and attract the right people to me. Well, what does this have to do with publishing and, and 
talking on Facebook Live. Well, I was scared to death to do a Facebook Live. I wouldn't, I put it off for almost a year actually doing a Facebook Live. And then I, I began doing a couple sporadically here and there. And I kept hearing over and over again from some people I admire, you have to publish regularly. You have to publish regularly. But I was scared to do it. So then I started to come up with ways and tricks and techniques to make myself publish and do Facebook Lives. I would create challenges for myself. And then I would challenge myself to do a Facebook Live every day for like 30 days. And pretty soon they got easier and easier and easier. Do I... Do a great job at Facebook Lives? Uh, no. Is it a continually improving process and will I get better and better and better at them? Yes. But why I started this little pajama grandma question Facebook Live every day is because it allows me to, to get my voice warmed up in the morning, to come online, think of a question that I would like to know the answer to, and I think that other people like to know the answer to questions too, but it's warms it warms me up for the other videos and the other things that I'm doing because now... I am involved in, in a 365-day daily live challenge with the group. We're actually on day... I have to keep a notebook. I'm doing so many things. We're on day 207 today. I do what's called a daily scare share. We're out of this little book, Do One Thing a Day That Scares You. I share a comfort zone stretching activity with people every single day to help them get out of their comfort zone, like doing Facebook Lives or doing a podcast or publishing a blog post every day so that they can get out and begin publishing too or create whatever it is that they want by stretching their comfort zone. And we're on day 290 today for that. I'm also um, on a group called The Attractive Character where I share the daily scare share with them to help encourage people to publish. I'm doing two challenges right now. The One Funnel Away Challenge, which this little episode is a part of, and we're on day 10 for that. And I'm doing my own Super Size Your Business Challenge, which we're on day 54 of for that. And then I do a daily um, Facebook Live about what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world. And we're on day 277 for that. So now I'm really not afraid. I mean, I've 290 days, 277 days, 207 days. I've done thousands of videos this year, Facebook Live videos. And so I can hop on the video I can grab my cell phone and I can just start talking about just about any subject that people would pose to me. And I feel comfortable doing that. And that's a huge transformation for me. I mean, I would do my first couple of Facebook Lives in face masks. And then if I watched them, I would never publish them. But now doing Facebook Lives, doing podcasts, writing blog posts, sharing myself with the world has become almost second nature and pretty easy for me. And is it scary to get online and tell people about my divorce yeah I mean I still feel bad about it I haven't I haven't gotten all the way through that yet because that's a huge life event and we have life events like that but publishing and being myself online has made working through that experience and the transformations that I'm making in my life much easier I thought it would make them much harder but it's made them much easier so that's a little bit about me and why I do the pajama grandma question every morning. It's to get me going and warm me up and get me energized for my day or just to get answers to questions that I have that can help me move forward in my life as I go through this transition. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome day. You know I will be back here tomorrow with another perplexing, perplexing pajama grandma question. What one thing would you like help with? What one thing is a challenge for you that I might be able to help you with. I would love to know. Share in the comments below, and I will be with you tomorrow. Bye. Jam Graham out.